Okay, so here's an example looking at uh, translational and rotational kinetic energy. So this is a this is a battery. I don't know if you can tell it's a battery. So imagine that battery is rolling along like that. Without slipping, that's an important thing. Okay, without slipping. So what's the ratio? It has two types of energy in this case. Two types of kinetic energy. It has translational kinetic energy because its center of mass is moving. And then it has rotational kinetic energy because it's also spinning. So what's the ratio of translational to rotational kinetic energy. I can actually do this. Oh, there's a magnet on there. Look at that. Uh, I can actually do this for this actual battery, but let's just do it uh, theoretically, not putting in values, because uh, and let's see what happens. And if we need to, we can put some masses in. So the first thing is my definition of translational kinetic energy. So the translational kinetic energy is one half times the mass of the object times the velocity of the center of mass. So this is the center right there. So it's rolling, but the center is moving. The rotational kinetic energy depends on two things. It depends on how fast it's rotating and the rotational mass. Okay, So the rotational mass we call the moment of inertia, and it depends on both the mass of the object and how that mass is distributed about the axis of rotation. So in this case, if I'm rotating about the center, for a disk, which is a disk, right? It's a really thick disk, but it is a disk. For a disk rotating about the axis going through the center, the moment of inertia is one half mass times the radius squared. So we need the radius right here and the mass. Okay. So let's just calculate. Let's get. Uh, I want to get the ratio. I'll call it R equals K T over K R. So it's going to be one half m v squared over one half i omega squared. So right away the i's cancel, the one halves cancel. So I'm going to say this is m v squared over i omega squared. Now I'm going to put in my value for i is one half i omega, one half m r squared. So I get m v squared over one half m r squared omega squared. Now the mass is canceled. And I'm going to uh, I have an improper fraction, so I'm going to divide, multiply both sides by half. I'm sorry, divide both sides by half, which is multiply by 2. And I get 2v squared over r squared omega squared. Okay, now, but there is one more trick. Because if an object is rolling and not slipping, then the rotational rate, if you consider uh, a point right here on that's contacting the surface not slipping, that means that if this is moving that way with some speed relative to the center mass, the center mass has to be moving that way with the same speed. So we get the following, omega equals v over r. This is true for the relationship between the velocity on a point of a circle and the angular velocity of that object. So if I substitute this in down here, I get 2 v squared over r v squared r squared over r squared. And you see what squared, cancel, 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 two. So this means that there is twice for this for this cylinder, there is twice the kinetic translational kinetic energy as rotational kinetic energy if it's rolling without slipping. Of course, you could you know I could move it this way without just sliding it along the table. Now there's no rotational kinetic energy. Okay. Also, I could do this. I could spin it without moving, now there's no translational kinetic energy. So this is only true in the case of rolling without slipping.